Now that we're moving back in person, we gotta start thinking, what are we gonna keep from virtual learning? Welcome to This Week in Education. I'm your host, EJ Carrion. Every week, we highlight innovative trends, educators, and districts that are building future-forward schools. Please don't forget to subscribe and share our comprehensive videos on emerging trends with your colleagues. As schools rush back in person and open up for five days a week, there are some schools that remain virtual or stay in hybrid for the remainder of the year. Just last week, the U.S. Department of Education granted its first widespread waiver from testing requirements to the District of Columbia due to a large share of students learning remotely and concerns about safely administering exams. District of Columbia officials told the federal agency that 88% of students were learning remotely as of March 20th. Michigan has become an epicenter of regional surge, but unlike earlier waves of the virus, the patients who are being admitted are largely young adults who are not prioritized for the vaccine, making young people more susceptible to the virus and unable to get back to in-person school. On Friday, Governor Gretchen Whitmer called for Michigan schools to stop in-person teaching and sports for two weeks, but stopped short from ordering them to do so. According to the Return to Learn tracker, R2L, as of March 29th, 58% of students are still virtual or hybrid learning. Many districts who are unable to rush back in person due to positivity rates in their communities are also feeling like they have found a groove with hybrid and believe they can end the year strong by bringing important in-person opportunities back safely, such as prom, graduation, and summer learning opportunities. My guest this week is Dr. Ann Lavette, superintendent at Savannah Chatham County Public School System, which supports 38,000 learners in the state of Georgia. Her students just got back from spring break and will remain the rest of the year in hybrid format. The students will get an in-person prom, a graduation that meets the CDC guidelines while having a comprehensive list of opportunities for the summer. These are opportunities that were not available last year to the 2020 class. Well, I'm Ann Levette. I'm superintendent of Savannah Chatham County Public Schools in beautiful Savannah, Georgia. We have finally been able to, to return to hybrid learning. So we have about a third of our students, which is a little over 12,000 who are participating in hybrid learning. They're in class um, three days a week and then on virtual two days. And then it rotates. We have two cohorts, cohort A, cohort B, and they will be in three days in person, two days um, virtual on rotating basis. And we plan to be in that mode until the end of the school year, which for us ends May 21st. Like many of our guests and topics, we often discuss what the school experience looks like after a year of virtual learning. What do we do with all the devices and hotspots? What do we do for students who actually thrive during this moment? How can we expand opportunities in person by providing virtual experiences? What was great about speaking with Dr. Lavette was that she shared with me how she plans to keep virtual not as something that they just do, but an integral value add to her students and families moving forward. COVID made them accelerate their plans, but the experience from last year gave her and her team the confidence to embrace virtual as a permanent opportunity. One of the things that we have learned and that my staff is looking into um, is if I have a kid who wants to take Russian four or Latin five and I don't have a teacher on hand, where can I find another teacher in another part of the state or another part of the country that can teach that course? That is that is my way of ensuring that my kids have a full, my students have a full experience, though I may not have the staff right here. So it could be that that course is taught across town at another high school. Mm. How can I, how can I ensure that my students have the very best experience? I have the technology, I have the connections. So I don't have to be a permanent student or a student at the permanent virtual school, but in my school, I can still have that virtual experience by connecting with others who are providing that content. Virtual learning will not just be available for students who choose to attend an academy, it will be fully integrated into Savannah Chatham County Public School students' learning experiences. Students will be able to keep devices and receive sustainable Wi-Fi from hotspot programs done by the district this year. The school distributed over 25,000 devices, purchased online instructional software, and rolled out Wi-Fi on wheels in Savannah and Chatham County for online learning experiences. These changes and digital tools are something that expands learning past the school day. I can't make it without my 
devices. I mean, my devices yeah. are fully integrated into my work. And for our students, while this was a great way for them to learn through the pandemic, it's also a part of their toolbox. So they will be using their devices in school, but they will also have access to their devices at home. We were very fortunate to be a part of the T-Mobile um, 10 million project. So we received 10,000 hotspots for eligible students in our district. And many of them have taken advantage of that, of those hotspots. So they now have devices and hotspots so they can learn 24 seven. So they can yeah. learn in the classroom with their devices, but they can also have access to their devices at home. And we think that is the way the real world works. I mean, the real Absolutely. world works where I have my laptop, but let it go down. Oh my gosh, I am in trouble. Or my telephone or my internet is out. So our students will be really moving into the 21st century in that their devices, their internet access will be a part of their everyday learning experience. Dr. Lovett and her team are optimistic about opening back five days a week in the fall and implementing innovations that have proven to work as everyone from her students, staff, and parents have shown their flexibility and resilience. Her county has given over 119,000 vaccines with 18% of the county residents fully vaccinated as of Thursday. My greatest source of inspiration are the kids who held on who could have opted out, the staff who held on and could have opted out, and our families who were clearly often working under duress and in distress, continued to support the school district and the kids and the students. I just think it's really important to acknowledge the resilience of everyone during this time period. And if we hold on just a little bit longer and take advantage of the new science that allows us to protect ourselves and others, I think we will be moving forward to this new approach to living. And that's what I'd, I'd love to see. I would like to see the three pieces that I spoke to with Dr. Levette be invested by schools across the country. Virtual is not just an amenity or a side project, but instead a foundational piece to our school infrastructure long-term. The three parts to sustaining virtual based on my conversation with Dr. Levette are first, establish a virtual academy that you're proud of, that you advocate for, that supports the families who are vested in remote, remote schooling. Second, continue the connectivity and device program through sustainable funding. And three, find ways to create equity through virtual opportunities such as expanding class options, virtual programming, and access to integrative supports past the traditional school day. These can create 21st century school for students so that school is no longer just a time frame, but a lifestyle. Thank you for watching This Week in Education. If you like this video, like it. If you really like it, subscribe. And if you really, really like it, share it with a friend. In the meantime, keep changing the world.